Hi everyone. I just wanted to uh, show you some things since we're about to go into completely um, online. Uh, I wanted to cover some materials and things you can use from home um, as we go through our little kind of quarantine time because I want you guys to stay up on your artwork. Um, art is so good for you. Do you know if you do 10 minutes, some of you guys have heard me say this in class, but if you do just 10 minutes um, of art, it doesn't have to be a masterpiece. It can be simple, something so simple as just um, blending colors um, and seeing how they blend together or just wetting your paper and dropping colors in. And that alone, just doing it 10 minutes, can um, significantly increase the serotonin in your brain and de-stress. So you guys, students, adults, parents, teachers, it's good to do some art and um, take some time and use whatever you have on hand. If you don't have um, some of these materials on hand, um, I believe that some of the stores are still open or you can order them. Um, but I wanted to show you that you can use cheaper materials and still get some really cool things out of it. Um, if all you have is crayons at home, get out your crayons and, and have fun. Um, I'm going to update on just watercolor materials specifically. So if some of my students want to um, order uh, some materials or run out to Walmart and find them or Michael's while they're still open um, then yeah let's let's get some materials but I want to show you there are some cheaper materials you don't have to break the bank to do this you can even use things like uh, Crayola and those are at the grocery stores um, and, and you can still get some really fun cool artwork out of those materials so I'm gonna walk you through some papers and some um, different ways to create palettes and stuff like that. So what I have open right now in front of you guys is this right here. This is mostly student grade um, watercolors and they're easily found uh, for the most part. Like this one is one of the most easily found ones and this is Reeves. Okay, so it's just a Reeves set. Um, you can find it at Michael's, you can find it at Hobby Lobby. Um, any like kind of crafting art store pretty much will have Reeves and it is a cheaper set It's not going to be pure pigments that you're going to find in there It's not going to be necessarily light fast, but you know why we're just trying to paint and we're trying to keep up on our artwork And most of the time, you know, it's not like you're trying to sell it You only really need to be really specific about your light fast ratings and pigments is when you're going to sell your work Or display it in a really bright sunny room and so right now we're just students We're just learning so we're just gonna Focus on being able to do our artwork and, and de-stress and stay creative. So um, this is the Lucas. This is what we use in class. Um, so you can see it's L-U-K-A-S and it's Aquarell Studio. These are the student version. Um, and you can find these on Amazon. You can find them on Jerry's, Artorama, uh, Dick Blick, and some other places all carry sets of Lucas. And so these, and the nice thing about these is they come in a pretty big um, tube and so you get quite a bit of time out of them. They're 12 milliliters. These are 10 and these aren't bad. This is just a step up. They're actually going to tell you what pigments and stuff are in them. So they will be more expensive. These are a lot more cost effective. So if you're, if you're, you're a student and you want to use the tubes so you have a softer watercolor, then these are two really good affordable options for you. Um, these are just uh, some of these are more student grade brushes. Again, just pick up a set of brushes. I will warn you that if some of the brushes at Walmart sets, um, they shed. And I've um, I picked up some just as emergency sets when students forget them in my acrylics class. And we've had a few that we've had to throw out. So just know that, that when I say they shed, the bristles and the fibers start coming like crazy out. And, and so that's no good. I mean, some brushes do that a little at the beginning, but they should continue to shed into your artwork and then it looks kind of crappy. So we don't want that. Um, another good thing to have on hand is you could have a black marker or sharpie pen. This isn't necessary, but they're just kind of fun to have. And then this is one of my favorite gel pens. It's Uniball and it's white um, ink. And so it's just handy, especially when I'm traveling. You guys have seen my travel kit. I always have those in my travel kits for when I'm out. Um, if you're out of washi tape, use masking tape. You can use scotch tape. And all those things can help to tape them down. And I showed you guys how to cut up boards from binders because those are so handy so I'm reaching <laughs> 
So like here's a three ring binder. So what you do is you just open your three ring binder, find an old one, and just cut along that seam right there. And then you have a nice board to tape down some watercolor paper to that is also waterproof. Um, so you can see an example of that right here. This one's taped down. Um, also, what would work if you have it on hand at home, because I'm trying to show you how to be cost effective, is clipboards. And sorry, I'm going to bump this camera. But here's a clipboard. It's actually the back of it. So you can both use both sides if you wanted, but you just tape it down. All right, I want to show you a couple different other paints. Um, Crayola. Hey, man, Crayola. It's pretty good out of the, the pan sets that are for like elementary and, and so on. Um, Crayola still puts a little more pigment in than some of the other brands. And so pick up a Crayola. You know, you can still rock out some really good paintings. I've literally sat with my kids and painted some things and really liked the effects and things I got out of it. Um, we're not, you know, it's just, it's nothing to be ashamed of. Go get a Crayola set. It's important to paint more than it is the other. Um, if you want to, if you get these soft paints and you want to create a palette for yourself, like I've done here. Um, these are some of my professional grade, but I've shown you before. I'm in the middle of something, so that's why my palette's so dirty. But I just fill up these little tins. These are found on Amazon. Um, this one's a meet-in, but normally I just look for whoever's got good ratings and has a good sale going on. Um, this is a little one. Here's a big one. Uh... This one's perfectly clean because I haven't even filled it yet. And it comes like this. You can get them so that they come with the little cups. And you just pop those things in right here. Fill them with your paint. Um, I normally let it sit out for a few days. Kind of firm up. Especially because I use M-Gram paints. And M-Grams uh, use honey as a binder. And they stay so moist. So I, I leave them for a few days so they can really set up. Now here is a super great cost effective... Um, palette um, that I really love and I recommend it all the time we buy it for uh, my kids friends for their birthdays but this is Koi watercolors and uh, it's just a Koi watercolor palette we just get the 24 you don't need to get the really crazy big one but it's a really cool setup and I'll show you why so it's got this little palette it's got this area it comes out one of my kids was just using this the other day because she could find hers and um, it comes with a nice assortment of colors. It actually tells you what the all, all the colors are. It has numbers and it gives you a chart. Um, it's got it comes with a water brush, and they actually legitimately have good water brushes. Cause I get really mad if my water brushes are bad, but it comes with a legitimate good water brush. And their water brushes, uh, their brushes come to a good point. They seem to have a good flow. Let me set the sound. Um, and this one actually comes with the water brush in it. It'll be deconstructed. It's really cool how it works. We've taken them on airplanes. We've taken them in the car trips. And because of the way it's set up, you just use your water brush to paint with. You don't need a cup of water. I'm just going to show you on the bottom. It's got this little thumb ring or finger ring. So I put my finger in there and I just pull it out. Now these are normally between $20 and $25 on Amazon. And the nice thing about these is you just squeeze a little water into the color that you want to paint with. So this is their ultramarine. And then I'm just going to get it wet. I go like this. This is a palette actually. But you see, you just put your paint down. When I want to wash the brush, you squeeze out a little bit more water onto your brush and you just rub it across the sponge. Now my this palette is Two years old so these sponges look gross i pull them out and i wash them with dish soap but they are stained and that is fine so anyway you do that and suddenly you have you can check it on uh, some tissue but for the most part you can have a really nice clean brush keep going we've taken on airports it's really nice so also you can cut your watercolor paper down and actually fit it in the sled and this becomes like a palette so you can paint right here which i've done that multiple times as well so it's just a super handy little travel watercolor kit the cool thing about this is that the watercolors within here um are really pigmented so you're still getting good vibrant bright colors and for something that's about 20 bucks it's it's just absolutely amazing and i can't wait till this is going to sound weird, but I can't wait till these are all used up because once these paints are used up, I'm actually going to fill it up back up again with my more expensive paints just because I love, I love that there's so much area for mixing colors. 
Um, let's see. Those are your different um, paint options. There's more that you'll find at the stores. Mainly just get yourself some paints is the important part. Um, I'm going to show you guys some different watercolor papers that we've used in class and talk to you about which ones are more expensive or cheaper and where you can find better deals. And so one of the things I've told most of you guys is to go pick up one of these. They run about four or five bucks. Um, if you're getting, if they're more than that, then you might be getting price gouged. But anyways, it's just a Canson XL um, mixed media. And these are just super handy to have on hand when I give you guys assignments to sketch while you're painting get one of these okay because you can just sketch and paint um it's especially nice with those water brushes because then i can just do a quick sketch what these aren't good for um they do have a decent thickness to the paper they're 98 pounds but um they're not good for like big repeated washes so if you're doing like something like a sunset like this where we need to really wet the paper and go over it a couple of times this isn't i mean you can do it but it's not the best option this is more for light water sketching stuff like that it's really great for colored pencil too if you like colored pencil crayon pen, marker you know stuff like that this is our go-to in our family i it's like we have a subscription because i have a few artists in our family so we are always stocked in these um, in class, we have used this quite a bit, mainly because it's affordable and I want you guys to learn. Um, on bigger projects, I get you more expensive paper, but again, this is fairly cheap and um, it's called, it's again, it's the XL Canson, but this time it's watercolor paper. And so we get the watercolor paper and we do that for some of our projects and then sometimes just for the color mixing and stuff like that. So here's one of my students doing the color mixing activity that you guys didn't take home last time. Um, another step up from that is Strathmore has watercolor paper and this is cold press 140 pound. Um, they call it the 400 series and you get decent, um, you can do some decent washes. It, it works good. It's a cellulose paper. It's not cotton, um, but it's a really decent paper. It's really reliable. You can do a lot of fun things with it. So um, I have them on hand just to like have fun. So there's like a lot of YouTubers um, that do tutorials or fun exercises. So this was one of those fun exercises that you could do with a, a YouTuber. And you can just kind of play around and have fun. But you get some pretty nice effects out of this. And it's affordable. Now the next two are the good stuff. And we pull those out every once in a while in our class for bigger projects. And this is Arches. Um, I have both cold press and hot press. Um, I tend to like cold press better, but that's just me. These are 100% um, cotton paper, and they are just, uh, they're delightful. Uh, they lift well. They take on multiple washes. They're not going to buckle bad on you. Um, they're really cool. So these are, uh, this is a project I'm working on right now. Um, so I'm not quite finished with her. It's off of a photo my daughter took. She was laying on grass. Um, this is one of her, um, her best friends. And um, I'm actually going to make like galaxy and stuff like that. So I might actually record that just so that while I'm finishing this out, I can show you how to do galaxy paintings. And then you can make a galaxy. But she's, she's going to be on clouds and galaxy. Um, and that's the hot press paper and then we have and hot press is very smooth okay which is not like what we've been using in class in class we've been using cold press it's got a little bit of a texture this is upside down so this is my favorite now if you watch uh, different stores online will have sales on this um, so definitely like sit it in your website so that you have Jerry's, you have Dick Blick, um, Cheap Joe's is another art website you can look at, and Amazon. And every once in a while, Amazon will drop this down to $14, um, $14 to $16. And when that happens, then that's a good time to grab this, um, any of the art websites. So here's one of the paintings I've done um, on cold press paper with arches but it's able to take so many washes that if you need to lift your color up again you can still do that it just like it really keeps the colors vibrant as well because sometimes um, there's a big transition as your watercolors dry if it's a cheaper paper and so if you're getting serious and you really want to keep up then you know look for some arches but don't break the bank you guys don't spend too much money just just look and watch for it to go on sale and then grab it when you can Again, art doesn't have to break the bank, and it's more important that you are painting. Um, if you're 
house is low on paper products, I definitely suggest you guys start using like an old rag or towel. This is like an old mini mouse washcloth that one of my girls used to have and this is an old kitchen towel and so I can use those instead of paper towels. Um, I always use at home, I'm using two water jars because you want one for your dirty water and one for your clean water. It keeps your pure colors going better. Um, so another paper that we have used in the past is called bee paper and it's 100% cotton. Right now the, the company that originally started bee paper has gone out of business and a friend of mine that has an art store, she informed me that somebody else had bought it out. So hopefully we'll start seeing it again, but right now it's hard to get a hold of that paper. But when it comes back, I'll let you know so that you guys can get some because that one is super affordable and good paper. So I'm going to close this, well, actually, I'll get out the Lucas because in a little bit here I'm going to actually do a project and instead of using my paint that I use, I'm going to use the Lucas so I'm staying accurate to what you guys would do at home. Alright, so go get some art materials. If you struggle to get art materials, this is at the dollar store, remember. Um, message me, let me know. Um, I am trying to see if we can uh, set up some time for you guys for those of you that don't have art materials at home or you cannot go out and get them, um, I know some people are immunocompromised, um, have lung issues, we don't want you getting sick. Um, so if we need to, you know, I'm trying to get into the uh, closet supply and uh, then I could send you home with like an art palette with some paints and everything and some paint brushes if you need it. Okay, so let's keep doing art even if we're on our little uh, three week staycation home. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay healthy in your mind by doing some watercolor. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.